Ah, yes. Good morning, angels. So here we are, here we sit. What's next? Now what do we do? My entire life has been one great, big, huge, happy accident, and I, I have fallen heart first into every single event that has happened to me, and I have been blessed and lucky to have been carried by people who are far kinder, far more educated, far more caring than I could ever possibly have hoped to be. I'm blessed and I'm lucky. The big thing in my life, the next big event has always just happened, you know, whether I've wanted it to or not, really. And the people around me that I have loved and I've cared for, I've sort of dragged in head first, whether they wanted to or not. I was 16 years old and I was sitting at the edge of my bed with a handful of pills because I really thought that the world would be better off without me. I was too much, you know, I was too theatrical, I was too dramatic, I was too emotional, I was too fabulous for words, really, is what it was. <laughs> and I was watching television, and on the television was uh, Phil Donahue, who was Oprah before Oprah was Oprah. And he had on these three guests, these three fabulous women, beautiful, bewigged and bejeweled and be belashed and pushed up. And I mean, they were just fantastic. And they were talking about these really intelligent things, the politicizing gender. And I thought, wow, these strippers really know what they're talking about. <laughs> I thought, good for them. And Phil eventually told us that, in fact, these women were born a different gender, that they had transitioned, they had moved, they had become. And I sat there on the edge of my bed with these handful of pills, and I thought, oh, there I am. There I am. These women had become. They had moved. And I recognized. I'll never forget one afternoon I got my really first big gig at my first big theater. And I was so excited. And I was in my 30s by that time. And I wanted to call my mother. And by that time I had transitioned from male to female. I had been through a life of prostitution and drugs and, and a diagnosis of AIDS. And my mother was all uh, aware of all of this. And I called her because I was really excited about this gig. And I said, mother, mother, guess what? And she said, I don't want any more surprises from you. When Dorothy is going across the yellow brick road, she comes to a crossroads, you know, and the yellow brick road is going east and west and north and south, and she stands in the middle of it, and she asks the universe, well, now which way do we go? And from the back of her, the scarecrow says, well, some people find it nice to go both ways. What do you do? Do you think? Do you have a plan? Do you? What's next? What's next for you? Your life is one great big series of happy accidents. And you have a choice. You can either listen to everybody else and do the plan. And I think the plan is great. The plan is divine. Or you can fall head first into the next big thing. You can dive head first into the next great gift. You can dance naked in the rain with the divine music playing above your head. You can sing your own beautiful, fantastic, fabulous song that no one else wants to hear. You can speak and proclaim unto the universe your greatness and beauty, your profound, great, gorgeous gift, or you can listen to everybody else. You can make a decision. This is your time to choose. I was sitting under a desk when I was on the first day of uh, drama class, and we were supposed to go around the room and stand up and talk about who we were. I was 16 years old. And so I stood up, and I was getting ready to talk about me, 
And I look, and at the very far end of this room are these green, green eyes attached to the most beautiful, pure spirit I'd ever been in contact with, and I fell instantly in love, instantly in love. Love at first sight, it's true, it happened to me. But I listened to everyone else around me, because there were rules about gender, and rules about who you were supposed to fall in love with. So I ran from those green eyes for a really long time and I fell knee deep into my own despair, lost myself. It took years for me to come back to those green, green eyes because I stopped listening to everyone else around me. And I finally got in touch with the spirit that had always been inside me. I became, I became, I let loose of what everyone else was telling me was right, was sure, was designed for me what I was supposed to do, and I fell head first. And I was taught by that woman that you don't skip, you don't tumble, you don't creep cautiously in love, you fall in love. You fall into your life. You fall into your divine gift. You fall into your own voice. Head first, angels, head first and heart open. You know the great thing about you? You've gained while you've been here. You've been expanded and you've been given the great gift of curiosity. This educational experience that you've had is the miracle that you finally readied yourself for. You've collected these people and now you must move forward. And I say you move forward with compassion and kindness, not ego. Anybody can be famous. Look at Kim Kardashian. No one gives a shit about your fame, angels. No one. You know what we care about? What's next for you? Your voice. What is that? Are you designed to teach? I think so. Are you designed to learn? I think so. Are you designed to move? I think so. Listen, it's fine to look back at the past. Just don't stand there and stare at it. Oh, and by the way, those women on the Phil Donahue show, they eventually became my family, my teachers, and my guides. And then one year, a great plague came, and they were systematically murdered. But I carried them with me, angels. I carried them with me every time I speak about them. Every single person next to you is being carried with you. Every single teacher you've had is being carried with you. Every single event that you have been through in your life is being carried with you. And you know what your job is. Your job isn't to be famous. Your job isn't to be well known. Your job is to continue that story. You have got to speak. You've got to speak loud. You've got to speak big. You've got to speak wide. And you have got to find the divine within every single angel next to you. Because I'm telling you, angels, time is brief. Time is theoretical. And you have got little to do but spread your voice, clear, present, and now. What's next? What's next? Here's the great answer. Nobody knows what's next. Nobody's got the answer. Nobody's got that idea. Nobody's got that. You've got to figure that out, angels. What's next? The great grand design of what's next? Your big, beautiful, divine gift? What's next, angels? I'll tell you what's next. Take your plan. Don't just break the rules. Change the rules. You've got to decide, angels. You've got to make a decision. And I say your decision has nothing to do with the people that are speaking to you. Yes, God. It's got nothing to do with the text. The people are telling you what's right, what you need to do, what's next for them. That text is bullshit. So angels, you are at a crossroads. You are at a crossroads, angels, and you have got to make a choice. And I say, think less, do more. For in that, 
The divine lives in you. Spread the story, angels. The universe is waiting. Have a gorgeous graduation. Yeah.